When you expose the narcissist's false superiority complex, this is what you can expect. Everyone, narcissists are individuals who believe themselves to be superior to everyone else. These people, known as narcissists, would boast about their accomplishments and belittle others to make themselves seem important. In our journey today, we will explore the reasons behind this exaggerated sense of self and learn how to gently guide these individuals toward a more humble realization of their place in the world. Oh, and if you haven't already, you may find my free course, Narcissism 101. Early warning signs, escaping the trap, and rebuilding your life, helpful. Please find the link in the description box below if you're interested. It's free. Now, dear viewer, we all have moments when we think highly of ourselves and feel a little selfish. But when I speak of narcissists, I refer to those who hold themselves on a pedestal far above others. They crave admiration and special treatment, often showing little regard for the needs and feelings of those around them. Deep beneath their superior facade, they hide a heart burdened by envy, driving their insecurities and competitive nature. Imagine, if you will, a world where success and achievements are not celebrated for their own merits, but rather seen as direct threats to the fragile ego of a narcissist. These sites, known as narcissistic wounds, can come from friends or strangers, colleagues, or even children. In their quest to remain on top, these individuals engage in constant competition, often stooping to petty put-downs and underhanded tactics to outshine their perceived rivals. For example, picture a person who scoffs at the illustrious career of Harrison Ford, merely dismissing him as a failed carpenter. This behavior, seen among narcissists, serves to bolster their own image while tearing down the accomplishments of others. Now, let us examine some common ways these individuals assert their dominance over others, bearing in mind that these actions are not isolated incidents. Firstly, narcissists consider themselves to be intelligent and capable. These individuals believe that degrees or certifications weren't necessary, and that they were more than qualified to tackle any task. They could argue that four degrees were more than enough, or that they knew just as much as someone with actual expertise. If they were conversing with someone who didn't know much about the topic, all they had to do was make something up, and voila, instant admiration. However, things changed when they were challenged by someone with superior knowledge. Suddenly, they became defensive, and their hostility would escalate when confronted by someone in authority, like a boss at work. They would insist that they were deceived, lied to, or painted as a fool, but never had it been their own ignorance of fault. Secondly, narcissistic individuals try to impress others with their language skills. They may respond with a complex word like precipitation when commenting on the weather outside, trying to show off their vocabulary. They often use what's called word salad, which consists of clever sounding sentences that may not make much sense. Words like precisely, literally, rationally, and nevertheless are common in their speech. The reason behind this could be that they use jargon and technical terms that most people wouldn't understand. This tactic often makes it tough to provide any useful feedback since one cannot criticize something they don't comprehend. Sometimes narcissistic individuals use words incorrectly or out of context to sound smarter. They'll then argue that the other person is too unintelligent to understand the fundamental concepts they're discussing. Finally, narcissistic individuals are selective in choosing their friends. They typically prefer to associate with people who are on the same level intellectually, financially, or even in terms of fame. In the workplace, for instance, it's common to find a coworker who only wants to talk to other executives. Those at the same level as them tend to be uninteresting and unworthy of their attention. Narcissistic individuals may even act as if they're the boss, delegating work, requesting status reports, and approving others' lunch breaks. They also tend to dominate conversations, ignoring the input of those they deem less competent or unworthy of their attention. They may appear friendly to those who are useful in advancing their interests, but discard them once they no longer serve a purpose. Fourthly, narcissistic individuals often manage to obtain positions of power in various settings. They're the first to jump into action when a situation arises, offering guidance and solutions even in areas where they have no expertise. They may give advice on important decisions, 
such as where to live, or offer support in difficult social situations. They always come across as confident and self-assured, and on occasion, they genuinely are. They revel in being the center of attention and using their influence to manipulate others into doing their bidding. If their advice pays off, they will take credit for saving the day. But if their plans fail, they may dodge responsibility by disavowing involvement or blaming others for not following their directions. In some instances, they may even fabricate an emergency solely to solve it and earn their reputation as a problem solver. Fifthly, narcissistic individuals often position themselves as the mediator between two parties who are in disagreement. After gathering information from both sides, they propose a solution that almost always seems better than the advice and plans of others involved. They have a talent for identifying flaws and obstacles that others miss, and they know how to overcome them. They may even rephrase other people's suggestions and claim them as their own, especially if those ideas seem promising. When working in a group setting, they tend to dominate the conversation, searching for problems and issues that may not be significant. They may request minor adjustments or changes in order to feel heard and validated. For instance, when I was in a management role before, we had each supervisor responsible for informing employees of changes in policies and procedures. We used email, scheduled meetings, and posted signs in the break room to disseminate the information. Despite everyone sharing their opinions and ideas, one person could not offer anything new or compelling. In the end, she suggested using blue drawing pins to attach the posters to the walls. This was a small contribution, but it helped her feel like she had made a significant contribution to the conversation. Sixthly, narcissistic individuals may rely on personality tests or other assessments to prove their superior observational skills. For example, they might boast about scoring highly on an empathy test they took online or receiving reassurance from a therapist that their worries are unwarranted. They may even claim to have a high IQ, often citing researchers or test results to support their case. However, they tend to keep these test results private and not allow anyone else to view them. Sometimes, they'll use these test scores to demonstrate their exceptional personality traits and selfless deeds. In other cases, they'll use the numbers as evidence that their partner or children are not hindering their success in life. Despite their supposed intelligence and insight, narcissistic individuals often lack the self-awareness needed to recognize their own shortcomings and flaws. Lastly, narcissistic individuals will never admit to being wrong since it would damage their delicate egos. Acknowledging defeat would imply weakness, which they cannot accept. They typically seek out individuals with low self-esteem or those who hold erroneous beliefs because they can benefit from them in social situations. When receiving criticism, they'll usually respond with dismissive gestures or laughing condescendingly, ignoring any obvious truth or reasonable argument offered. Instead, they'll focus on attacking the individual who presented the opposing viewpoint resorting to personal attacks to gain the upper hand. They'll criticize the person's age, attractiveness, or social status as a way of deflecting from the issue at hand. Grouping people together and making broad generalizations about them is also a common habit of narcissistic individuals, giving them a sense of superiority over others. They care little about the accuracy of their statements and more about maintaining control of the conversation. Your reputation is destined to endure for eternity, and inevitably, people will try to undermine one another. Rather than presenting their own ideas, people with pathological narcissism are more likely to discredit their opponent's arguments through deceitful means. They may even go so far as to alter accounts of conversations, exaggerate and confuse details, or become combative if necessary. Anything to avoid admitting fault or looking foolish. They may also throw a pity party, telling themselves that they turned down opportunities for fame and fortune in favor of more virtuous pursuits. However, pathological narcissism often worsens over time since narcissists refuse to acknowledge the validity of alternative viewpoints or adapt to new information. Admitting fault would be disastrous for their fragile self-esteem, and thus they resort to their usual tactics of deceit and exploitation to maintain their air of superiority. Such behaviors only serve to make them appear more foolish and desperate in the eyes of others. Feel free to share your thoughts on this topic in the comments section. And please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video 
and are interested in exploring more discussions on this topic. Thanks. So everyone, today we just talk about something that affects a lot of people, narcissists. These people believe themselves to be better than anyone else and they will do anything to make others see them that way too. But why do they act like this? And can we change their behavior? Let's summarize this video again. First of all, what is narcissism? It is when someone has a grandiose sense of self-importance, a need for admiration, and a lack of empathy for others. They will manipulate and exploit people to get what they want, and they won't hesitate to put others down to make themselves look better. It's not just being confident or self-assert, it's a pervasive pattern of behavior that affects every aspect of their lives. So why do some people become narcissists? There is no one cause, but it could be due to a combination of factors. They may have been neglected or abused as a child, or they may have grown up with parents who were awfully critical or demanding. Perhaps they were praised too much for their achievements and didn't learn how to handle failure. Or maybe they developed narcissistic traits to cope, to cope with feelings of inadequacy or insecurity. Anything can happen and anyone can be a narcissist, so always be careful. Whatever the reason, the result is the same. A person who is obsessed with their own image and doesn't care about the feelings of those around them. They will do anything to maintain their superior position even if it means hurting others along the way. So how can we deal with the narcissist in our lives? It's not easy, but there are some things we can do to try and help them see the error of their ways. Firstly, we can try to gently redirect their behavior. For example, if they are always talking about themselves, we could try to steer the conversation towards, some, towards something that interests them but isn't just about them. Or if they are always putting others down, we could point out the positive qualities of the people they are criticizing. Secondly, we can set boundaries. We should let them know that their behavior is unacceptable and won't be tolerated. We can also refuse to engage with them when they are being disrespectful or abusive. Thirdly, we can try to empathize with them. Narcissists have a deep-seated fear of being inferior, so if we can show them that it's okay to make mistakes or not always be the best, they may be more willing to listen and change their behavior. And last but not least, we should remember that we can't change them overnight. Narcissism is a deeply ingrained pattern of behavior and it may take a lot of time and effort to help them see the error of their ways. But with patience and understanding, we may be able to make a difference. So in conclusion, dealing with the narcissist can be challenging but it's not impossible. By understanding the reasons behind their behavior and taking steps to gently guide them towards a more humble realization of their place in their world, we can make a difference in their lives and in our own. Thank you for watching this video and remember to subscribe to my channel for more discussions about mental health in the future. And until next time, have a great day everyone.